in this second lecture we'll be looking at conditional probability. So two events A and B if they occur and we want to know the probability of A occurring given that B has occurred so we want A occurring and we know the probability that B has occurred we write that as probability of A given B in this way and we read this as probability of A given B or conditional probability of A given B and so this thing here is actually probability so it satisfies all the other rules of probability meaning that for example this is between 0 and 1 inclusive and if I wanted to look at things like the complement of A I can do that it's probably it's going to be exactly the same as before probability of A complement is 1 minus probability of A with the conditional past of there so the definition of this conditional probability is that as long as probability of B is bigger than 0 in other words B does have a chance of happening probability of A given B, the formula is probability of A intersect B over probability of B. And so what we're looking at now is essentially now that we know that B has occurred and I want to know probability of A occurring, we're looking only at the part where B and A both occur together. So because B has occurred and I'm looking for A occurring, it can only happen in this part over here, the part I'm circling. That's the only part it can happen in. So that really means that if I want to now look at the probability of A happening, my sample space is now restricted to only this part here. Since B has happened and I'm looking at A happening, that's my sample space, my reduced sample space now. And so, sorry, uh, what I mean is my sample space is all of B because B has happened. But in that part, the only place that A can happen is this part over here. So my reduced sample space actually is all of B. And in that part, the only place A can happen is the way A and B happen together. So that explains the formula in some way. Now, looking at an example, we've got here the bank data, which you have available online. We're looking at a table of the gender and job grades. And so I'm going to work out some probabilities from here on the next slide. So the table here lists two things. While we are on this matter, if you look at tables, what you should be looking for is, in these two tables, any patterns you will see across the table or down the table. So in this case, if you look across the table, you will find as you go to the higher grades, the numbers of employees actually decrease. So the table lists the number of employees at, at each job grade and by gender. Altogether, there are 208 employees, 140 female and 68 male. So looking across the table, you'll find that the number of employees decrease. Looking down the table, what you'll find is that there are higher numbers at the lower job grades of females, higher numbers of females at the lower job grades, but at the top end over here, at the highest job grade, and the one before that, you have more males. So there are more males at the higher job grades against the females. So this is the situation we're looking at at the moment. So on the next slide, I'll be looking at some probability. So if I'm looking at probability of male, being male given job grades bigger than equal to 5, so I'm looking at the males only. They're all together 68 males and job grade bigger than equal to 5 means there's 25 of them out of there. So it's 25 out of 68. Uh, sorry, the other way. Male given job grade bigger than equal to 5, excuse me. So I'm looking at job grade is 5 or 6 and the total number of employees there are 35 and the number of males there are 25 so it's 25 over 35 the next one I'm looking at probability of job grade bigger than equal to 5 given females so I'm looking at all the females they all together 140 females and the number of employees in the females above 5 or here is only 10 so 5 or above is 10 there's 10 out of 140. And finally, probability of being female given the job grade is less than equal to 4. So I know the job grade is less than equal to 4. So below 4, I need to add all these numbers up. And if I do that, what I'm getting here in the bottom is 173. And how many, how many of them are female? Well, the females are the top line there. So I'm going to add all these up here. And what I get there is altogether 130. So probability of being female given job grade is less than equal to 4 is 0.715. So
So the question further asks here, if I'm going to look at all this, the question here is, do you, does there seem to be any gender bias in the employment at various grades? So clearly, if the job grade is bigger than equal to five, you have a high chance of being male. If the job grade is less than equal to four, you have a high chance of being female. And in fact, if you're female, you won't be at the high job grades. So there seems to be some gender bias in the promotions in the bank, if you like. The higher job grade workers tend to be male and not female. Adding to this uh, conditional probability law, law is the multiplication rule. See, if I turn the conditional probability law around, I get multiplication rule. So essentially what we had was probability of A given B was probability of A intersect B over probability of B. So from here, if I take a look at probability of A intersect B, I can take this across. So I can think of as probability of A intersect B is probability of B times probability of A intersect B. And of course, I can write this the other way around. I can look at probability of B given A. And from that one, if I look at this, this is probability again of A intersect B. But this time is over probability of A. So I can rewrite here probability of A intersect B is probability of A times probability of B given B. So the way we think of this is if A and B happen together, first A happens and then B happens given A has happened, or first B happens and then A happens even B has happened. So we of course expect that something will happen here, so probability of A, probability of B must be positive here. And as I was saying earlier, if A and B are to happen together, A intersect B, either A happens first and then B happens, given A has happened, or B happens first and then A happens, given that B has happened. So I can use uh, that conditional probability idea to look at problems and solving problems using tree diagrams. And I shall look at that in the next lecture. Thank you.